Top 14 System Analyst Interview Questions and Answers We have compiled Top 14 System Analyst Interview Questions that might be asked in an interview to test various aspects of system analysis skills, with tips and a sample answer for each of them. These system analyst interview questions will help employers to assess whether each candidate has the required knowledge and experience in performing system analysis. 1. Can you share some of your experience in the most recent computer programming projects? Before hiring any candidate the interviewer makes sure that the person is experienced enough to deal with shortfalls occurring in the job tenure. Which are your most recent experiences? Think of those in mind. It can be anything from a college project to a training program. Tip number two, make sure that your experience is relevant to what the interviewer is expecting. Keep it short, informative, and simple. Sample answer. In my present organization, I have successfully managed to finish a project regarding ABC working as a system analyst. Considering the user's requirement, I undertook feasibility analysis after which I utilized the feasibility analysis report to come up with system specification analysis. System specification analysis gave me an insight into the functional specification which ultimately enabled me to draw a logical and cost-effective design and test plan. After that when the system was implemented through programmers again I evaluated the system based on the requirements. Few changes were required which I implemented and sent it back to the programmers. After the revision, it came out perfectly according to the requirement which initiated the deployment process. It's now under the deployment process. After that maintenance work will follow and feedback mechanism established. It was a great experience for me, too. Explain the process of analyzing the existing system. This system analyst interview question is simple. Yet the interviewer wants to know whether you are aware of the protocols associated with system analysis. Tip number one, prepare a checklist in your mind. Tip number two, ensure that you stick to the checklist made and do not fumble in between. Sample answer. Well, to analyze an existing system, I have to analyze the system and its execution, note down the key personnel working on the system and spend some time with the operating personnel to observe the finer details of the system performance. Then I have to define the scope and objective of the system and collect all important output and documents of the system. After that, I have to make a guideline, note down the checkpoints and controls used in the system, study the data flow between units, understand output reports memos, statements, etc., and create a base document to present before management. Feasibility analysis is very important after that which will determine whether the system met the intended objective or not. If there is any deviation I should be in a position to draw a revised system flowchart and discuss it with the operating personnel. Comparing the cost effectiveness of the new system with the old is very important after that. If the revised system is cost effective and needed, then after getting permission from the decision makers about the revised version of the system, it should start with the documentation writing for departmental use. 3. How will you differentiate between functional and non-functional requirements? The functional and non-functional requirements of a system are different. It includes data flow, classes as well as functional activities. Tip number 1. Remember the key areas of functional outcomes of a program. Tip number two, then think of what can happen next after the functional aspects are clear. Sample answer. To be very specific about functional and non-functional requirements, functional requirement describes what the system should do and non-functional requirements describe how the system should work. For instance, performance, capability, scalability, security etc. are the non-functional features of a system. So non-functional requirement describes actually the quality characteristics or attribute of a system. Whereas, authentication, administrative functions, business rule, transaction details, etc. are the functional features of a system. So the functional requirement describes actually the behavior or function. Or, have you ever been asked to design a new system with limited resources? Walk me through it. 
The questions aimed at your experiences are a great way to win the interviewer. Make sure that you always cite at least one example and do not forego the question at any moment. Tip number one, go back to your college days when the resources were limited yet you had to design software. Tip number two, let it be organic. Do not exaggerate. Sample answer. Yes, a year ago I was in a situation where resources were very limited. So I had to strategize. First of all, I assessed and diagnosed the team structure to have clear knowledge about the potential of the team. After the proper understanding of the team, I did a requirement analysis, business and process need, cost and quality analysis. Based on all the analysis decisions, I designed the system. After the system implementation, what followed was system evaluation to mitigate future system failure risk. Through this strategy, I achieved great success with limited resources. How do you deal with frequent changes in user requirements? Your interviewer here is trying to assess your patience and ability to deal with troubling situations. Without further ado jump to the question rather than creating a framework. Tip number one, keep it simple. Tip number two, do not complicate as the next question might come out of your answer. Sample answer. Change management is imperative to bring success to any role. If I'll ever deal with frequent changes in user requirements, I'll analyze the situation, invest adequate time to track all changes done so far and discuss with concerned personnel the reasons for new changes expected. I'll also make sure that we have a clear vision and practical plan in place to accommodate all changes that are needed for the company's growth. 6. What according to you are the skills required to become a good computer analyst? The interviewer wants to know if you are aware of the skills and inculcate them in your behavior. Tip number 1, do not fluff skills at any point. Tip number two, do not cite your examples. Let the interviewer decide. Sample answer. I believe that a good computer analyst should have an eye for intricate details as they would come across several troubleshoots in a given time. They should have the problem identifying and solving capacity along with a sound knowledge of software applications and networking. 7. Have you ever devised a flowchart or diagram to describe the logical operational steps of a program? Flowcharts and process flow diagrams aid to clearly convey the step-by-step -step instructions a system would follow. The interviewer is trying to understand how well you can convey your ideas via an effective visual representation. Tip number one, understand the motive behind the question asked. Tip number two, revise your flowcharts in the head. Sample answer. Yes, sir, I believe that any operation requires a logical representation in the form of a flowchart. I do draw out a flowchart after deciding on a program. It helps me in assessing critical parameters that I have to ensure while devising the program. 8. What should a system analyst document? Documentation is an integral part of a system analyst. Make sure that you answer this question to a perfect spot. Do you know the importance of documentation? Great, include it in your answer. Tip number two, turn it relevant with the system analyst profile. Sample answer. A system analyst should document what is going on in the system and what has not been built yet. It is often done with the participation of technical writers and system designers. It should include user scenarios, functional activities, data flows, classes, and interfaces between systems for comprehensive understanding. 9. What do you think, how often systems should be updated? Updating your system is crucial in order to maintain and monitor it properly. The interviewer wants to know if you know the importance of update. The answer should be simple because exaggerating it might put you in trouble. Tip number 1. Start your answer by underlining the need to keep software updated regularly. Tip number two, be confident while answering the question. Sample answer, generally, a system update is required for the security issues, bug fixing, etc. It's prudent to install updates to cater for these issues. 
Every program typically has some regular minor updates and major updates in every one to three years. 10. How would you explain a complex technical problem to non-tech stakeholders? There are times when you have to interact with non-technical people and make them understand the complex concepts of technology. Here, the interviewer is trying to know whether you can tackle such stakeholders. Tip number one. Your answer should reflect your efficiency in making complex technical concepts and problems sound simple. Tip number two, try demonstrating with an example. Sample answer. Firstly, I will not assume that my audience, in this case the stakeholders, that they have any basic technical knowledge. I will keep a cheat sheet of technical terms handy to make things easily understandable for them. I'll choose everyday examples to make my point and refer the context well to ensure the problem is comprehensible for them. 11. What would be the first action if the production is down? Situational questions are put up to detect your attitude towards dealing with the issue. Tip number one, make it more relevant by examples. Tip number two, you can also include your theoretical knowledge. Sample answer. First of all, I will identify the root cause of the issue, whether it is a database issue, application issue, or infrastructure issue. Production down can be a result of a failure in a process or system management. Hence, I will first check the database and reports to address the problem and analyze the error logs. After that I will take the necessary measures to bring everything back to order. 12. How would you evaluate and examine our existing systems to suggest the scope of improvement? Here, the interviewer wants to know how you can be an addition to the quality team. They will also test how detail-oriented you are. Tip number one, make sure to emphasize more on the company than you. Tip number two, define the scope of improvement clearly. Sample answer. As a system analyst, it will be my key responsibility to evaluate and examine the existing systems and try to give suggestions on the scope of improvement. So, first of all, I would like to engage the user and get try to get their feedback about it. Then I would like to analyze the whole thing and suggest what process can be improved or shortened or what new features can be proposed to the user. 13. How do you plan and prioritize your work? The interviewer here is trying to assess your planning and work management skills. Tip number one, focus on how you can be a valuable addition to the organization. Sample answer. I have a habit of organizing my tasks on a to-do list. I prioritize my work according to an urgent and important basis. I carry out first those tasks which ask for my instant attention by managing time. I'll also be flexible to accommodate any priority task without affecting my whole schedule. 14. Have you modified a system to enhance its workflow? Share your experience. If you are an experienced system analyst, the interviewer would want to know your ability to improve workflow with ease. Tip number one, give relevant examples from your recent experience. Tip number two, do not fluff and exaggerate. Sample answer. I have worked on different software systems in my past role. I came across a situation where I had to make a couple of modifications to enhance workflow. So, first of all, I analyzed the hardware as well as the software of the system. Secondly, I reduced the unwanted tasks to improve the workflow process. Finally, made a report and evaluated the system for improved performance.